Amame. She was here earlier. Really? She left pretty quick, though. It's Valentine's Day today, isn't it? Well, she brought some chocolate. Chocolate? Yeah, why? Is something wrong? She said she was headed to Iris's house. The Sagan household, huh? Thanks. I've been trying to get a hold of her, but... Her phone is out of battery. She told me earlier. I see. Why are you looking for Amame? Well, uh... You see... I tried calling Iris, but still no dice. We should just head to the Sargon household. Yeah, good idea. I was so busy today. We're expecting a lot of customers, so I have a lot of prep to do. Why are you expecting a rush? You know about what happened in Shinjuku yesterday? We're actually pretty close to there. A rocket? That's right. So anyway, there's tons of people around here now. I thought some of them might stop by here. Hey, Ryuki. What's up? I wanted to ask you something. Oh shit! A shooting star! I want chocolate from Tessa! I want chocolate from Tessa! I want chocolate! Damn it, I couldn't sit a third one in time! Why are you even asking me? Yakuza have connections all throughout the underworld, so I thought you might know something. <sighs> anything would help. Rumors, anything. Rumors, huh? So, our parent group, the Ujisaki, there's this higher up that's connected to Nice. I did hear something from him. The president of Nice Japan? Tokiko Shigure? She was in a relationship with the head of Horidori Institute, Chikara Horidori. What? Of course, this isn't recent. We're talking decades ago. Back then, Tokiko wasn't even the boss. She was just some grunt at Nice. But Chikara, on the other hand, was pretty high up the ladder at Nice. Used his newfound power to get with Tokiko. Back when she was in her 20s, I <laughs> heard she was a hottie. Uh, but like I said, she was young and naive. Chikara basically tricked her. He was married at the time, even had kids. Tokiko was his mistress. Real secret relationship type shit. Yeah, that's all I know about that. But I do have some more dirt on Chikara. This was also decades ago, but... Chikara went to child service agencies all over Japan and got something from them. What? DNA samples. He said it's for DNA treatment or something, but I don't buy it. My guess is he was doing something shady. Horidori Institute was real sketchy back then. Not bad. Tonight, Tessa is gonna have a Valentine's Day stream. Oh, thinking about it makes my heart dance. Oh, I'm so excited. You're talking about a mame doi? Tessa's friend. So you know her? Of course. I know everything about Tessa. So what about Mame? She might have some valuable information about the case. I'm trying to find her. Do you happen to know where she is? Sorry, I got no idea. I see. Hmm. Tokiko and Chikara in an illegitimate relationship. And Chikara getting kids' DNA. Hmm. Let's figure it out later. We still need to find Mame. Hey! Don't get in the Kotatsu without permission! It's cold out, and I'm cold. What are you doing here? 
I wanted to ask a few things. But before that, Shoma... Um... No, never mind. Don't worry about it. Dad. Dad. I shouldn't have said that you should die. It's all my fault. Shoma. Huh? What are you talking about? The Ferris wheel at Misaton. I didn't go to Misaton. What? That's impossible. I definitely saw you get on the Ferris wheel. Maybe you saw my doppelganger? Or maybe... my clone. Your clone? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I mean, we may have the technology for it, but... I've never heard of any human clones. Not to mention, it's forbidden by law. The law doesn't mean anything. Not to a psycho like Chikara. What do you mean? Yeah, they're researching cloning. So maybe they secretly made my clone. Impossible. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, I'm not kidding about Horidori Institute researching cloning. Just about cloning me. How do you explain the Ferris wheel then? Maybe you were seeing things. Seeing things? Maybe you got the TC Purge. Purge? What is that? Last year, they invented a way to edit genomes, called Purge. Purge was developed by Horidori Institute. TC Purge is kind of like a virus. People at Horidori Institute called it the organic nanomachine. It acts kind of the way a virus does. When it enters the body, it latches onto bacteria, and a protein complex called CRISPR-Cas beta is made. CRISPR-Cas beta can cut, move, and attach certain DNA nucleotide sequences. When it enters the brain, it can even overwrite the DNA structure inside neurons. It can make you see things, make you dance. It makes you do weird things over and over. And on top of that, TC purge multiplies in the body. It takes over the multiplication functions of bacteria and makes copies of itself. And it can be passed to other people with your breath. Shoma. How do you know all this? Well... There's just... some stuff. Shoma, you still haven't told me why you lied. Lied? About the code for BATS 490. That wasn't referring to Horidori Institute, but you said it was. Sheesh, can you just let it go? I didn't solve the code. Yeah? Do you know where she is? I have no idea. Ryuki, we can hold off on Horidori Institute. We need to prioritize. Yeah, we need to find Mame. I'm sorry, Shoma. This might be hard for you. But can you tell me about Komeji? Komeji picked something up at the rooftop amusement park in Misaton. Something that is meaningful or significant to terror. But he didn't tell me what it was. I thought you might know something. Sorry, but I have no clue. I see. It was two days ago that Tokiko's body was found here. The investigation is still ongoing. So, what are you planning on doing here? Mame wouldn't be here. I didn't come here expecting to find Mame. You should go to the Nice Japan branch. You should gain some valuable information there. What valuable information could be here? I don't know, but let's look around. My brain is fried. Need some glucose. 
maybe I'll eat some caramel. It's not a lead or anything, but it is interesting. What is? It's gonna take some time to prepare. I'll let you know when I'm ready. Hmm? You talking about the underground cathedral? It's off limits right now. There's concerns that it might collapse. So you don't know about the box? The box? There was a box there with a strange looking device. Tama, can you show the image? Sorry, I don't have it. What? Ryuki, when you went to the cathedral, you fall off the bridge, remember? The impact caused me to lose some of my memory. I was only able to recover up to finding Tokiko's body in the president's office. No backups? Because it was so deep underground, there was no signal down there. Come to think of it, there were some network problems. Exactly. So I couldn't upload the data to the cloud. Damn. Who? This girl. No. I don't know where she is. I see. The body is long gone from the autopsy. It really is a shame. She was killed right before her birthday. Tokiko's birthday is February 15th. There was a huge party planned for her here. It really is such a shame. Do you know this girl? Her name is Amame Doi. Oh, I know her. She's a mermaid at Sunfish Pocket. That's true, but how do you know that? Oh, um, well, I've been there a few times. I wanted to investigate the day-to-day -day lives of young women. As an inspector? I need to know what's in. It's an important part of being an inspector. That's a tough sell. Do you know where she is now? Ah, uh, no, I wouldn't know. I can tell you that she isn't working right now, though. I heard from another girl that she hasn't been feeling well recently. Right. It's unlikely that she'd be at Sunfish Pocket. Mame saw terror at the studio. And right after that, she saw Komeiji's body. It's unlikely she'd be at work with all that going on. Ryuki, I'm ready. That's what I mentioned to you earlier. Oh, please go ahead. Look at that pond over there. Is that? It's Tokiko's hologram. Her laptop was in the desk. There was a program running. This. I think it's some software aimed at these cultists. Needless to say, it's just an image. So she can't really interact with you. But she does talk. Lectures, even. If you give her a topic, she'll give some pre-recorded response. You can choose from four. Moksha, gain. Form is emptiness and the allegory of the cave. There's other data in there too somewhere, but it'll take time to get at. Moksha, or enlightenment. One is only truly free when free from all desires. But this state of mind is not something that can be easily defined or described in words. It is implicit knowledge. It is not something you can understand without experiencing it for yourself. Imagine, for example, someone who has never seen the color red. It is impossible to explain to that person what the color red is. You can't truly understand the redness of the color red until you experience it. Moksha is similar in this way. So how can you reach Moksha? Among Hindu followers are those known as the Sadhu. They follow a strict spiritual path of penance in an attempt to reach moksha. For example, one may stand on just one leg for decades, or try to roll across the entire Indo-Chinese continent. One may live on a bed of nails, another might strike his head upon a pillar thousands of times. Among Buddhists, there are the ascetics. They perform a thousand-day circumambulation, walking 30 miles a day around steep mountains. And they chant the mantras without pausing to eat, drink, or even sleep for nine whole days. It is said that the founder of Zen Buddhism, the monk Bodhidharma, 
sat cross-legged facing a wall without rest for nine years straight. But how do all these things achieve moksha? Is it because pain and penance cause your desires and thoughts to dull and disappear? That may be part of it. Or is it perhaps the state of nothingness that comes over you upon achieving these feats? One may come to the conclusion that desires themselves are illusory. Knives has a slightly different interpretation. Do you know how a debugger finds bugs in games? They try to run into walls over and over and over again. They go to places that normal players won't go, or leave the game on for days. They do things that normal players don't do. Unpredictable actions that the programmers fail to anticipate. That is how bugs that weren't even considered in the planning stages are found. Does this remind you of anything? Hitting your head on a pillar a thousand times. Sitting toward a wall for nine years. What if these actions were not anticipated by the creator? What if these actions uncovered bugs in the real world? What if they revealed the seams? In other words, these practitioners of the extraordinary are trying to find the seams. Find them and achieve enlightenment. Learn the secret of this world, the truth. And so we believe that moksha is this journey. This world is a simulation. Thus its creator must have created with intention. This intention we can never know for certain. But we can surmise and we can estimate. Imagine you attempt an action, but that action is prevented by something incomprehensible to you. It is reasonable to assume that action was something not considered by the creator. Contrarily, if you attempt an action and feel yourself compelled by some otherworldly force, it is probably something the creator did expect. Like rats trapped in a maze. Go in the wrong direction and receive a shock. Go in the right direction and receive a prize. Considering this, perhaps this simulation is actually a game. A game about escaping this inscrutable maze. Can you win this game? The creator probably wants you to. Form is emptiness. Emptiness is form. So reads the doctrines in Buddhist scriptures. Emptiness is not separate from form. Form is not separate from emptiness. Whatever is form is emptiness. Whatever is emptiness is form. Emptiness is sometimes translated as void or nothingness. Form is emptiness. Emptiness is form. Everything in this world is false. False is this world to the core. Shotok Taishi, who spread Buddhism in Japan, said something similar. All is false. Buddha is truth. The first part of the quote is self-explanatory. The latter requires context. Buddha, in this instance, is being used as a substitute for the general concept of enlightenment, bodhi, satori. Thus, the quote can be interpreted to mean, The sole truth of this world is enlightenment. Everything else is a falsehood. I will give another example. The Butterfly Dream, a famous legend told by Shuang Tso one of the founders of Taoism. One day, Shuang Tso was a butterfly in a dream. He awoke from his dream with a question. Was his being a butterfly a dream? Or is this world he awoke in a dream? Many notable people in history have had similar thoughts. These same questions have been passed down for thousands of years. Why is that? Could there be a truth hidden in all this. The Allegory of the Cave is a story first told by Plato, the ancient Greek philosopher. 
There are prisoners imprisoned in a dark cave. These prisoners have never witnessed the outside world. All they can see are shadows projected on the walls in front of them. Merely the shadows of grass and trees, flocks of birds. Even families of deer would be shown from time to time. But the prisoners who have never seen the outside world believe these shadows to be the truth, reality they do not doubt or question. One day, one of the prisoners unchains themselves and escapes the cave. They see real grass, real trees, real flocks of birds, and real deer. At that time, they saw the world as it truly is. Overwhelmed with emotion, they head back to the cave to tell the other prisoners of their discovery. Everything we've seen until now have been shadows, false images. The outside world is completely different. None of the other prisoners believe the escapee. Have they gone insane? They laugh. Do you understand this allegory? The escapee was enlightened with the truth and reached Moksha. So what about you? Do you plan to live your days chained in a cave, scraping by a living in a world of falsehood and fraud? Or do you plan to join us? The decision needs to be made. Please demonstrate your determination. Well, that sure was something. Didn't help much, though. Not necessarily. This information might come in handy later. Heh. <laughs> if you say so. Anyway, there was no information on Amame. Let's go somewhere else. I'm glad we had an open room for you. It's quiet here. You should be able to relax and focus on your treatment. Treatment? Oh, you don't have to worry about the paperwork for your stay here. We'll handle everything. Uh, hold on. My stay here? What are you talking about? Hmm? You don't remember? Remember what? Hmm, this is troubling. Doctor, you shouldn't. You shouldn't be doing this at the hospital. Put your ball away! No playing Kusimon Go in the hospital. My name is Hanayo Nasu. I'm a nurse at this hospital. I used to go by a different name. You got married? No, the opposite. I got a divorce, so I'm going back to my maiden name. Mr. Ryuki, do you remember getting a checkup? I'm sure the doctor would have told you everything. No, I have no idea. I see. Then I'm afraid I'll have to be the bearer of bad news. Mr. Ryuki, you have what we call cognitive dysfunction. Sometimes you'll forget what time it is or where you are, even lose track of the people around you. It's all part of your condition. In addition to that, we believe that you have a short-term memory disorder. Tama, is this true? Yes, it is. This is difficult for me to say, but your condition is very serious. We need to begin treatment immediately. Um, I'm going to get the files. I'll be right back, so please wait here. Excuse me. Okay, I went to the hospital like I promised. Now let's get going, Tama. What are you talking about? That nurse told you that you need to stay here. I don't have time for that. I need to solve this case. Please, Tama. Just three more days. I refuse. Fine, just one day. 24 hours is all I ask. Please let me do this. Please. I'll give you some chocolate later. Are you joking? You know I can't eat chocolate. No, I mean like, 
emotional chocolate. <laughs> ah, fine. But you're only getting 24 hours. Not a second longer. Thanks, Tama. <sighs> I'm sorry. I think you're just one step behind. Mame was here, but she left with Iris to go somewhere. I see. I'm sorry, Mame. Iris is taking a long time to get ready. Mame? Anything off about them? Like a state of shock or panic, maybe? Let me think. Iris seemed normal, but I do recall Mame seemed troubled. She didn't say a word while she was here. Like her head was somewhere else? While Iris was preparing to leave, she just stared off into the distance. Why do you ask? Well, um... I haven't seen Date in a while. I've been waiting for him, but... I'm sorry to ask such a delicate question. No, it's okay. Hmm. I'm not sure. They didn't tell me where they were going. Sorry to have wasted your time. There's no such thing as wasting time when you're investigating. Even the most insignificant piece of information could be relevant. Ryuki, I've never seen you so positive. Maybe you're a good influence on me. Let's get going. We need to find Mame. Well, we tried. Let's go. No, wait. That person over there. That's... Excuse me! Nice to see you again. I need to hurry. If I don't... Breath. Rats don't wear shoes. But you're not a rat. Squeak, squeak. Are you really a rat? Or uh, go again? The body is the opposite. What? I forgot to put mothballs in the dresser. Where is it? Where is the main event taking place? Main event? There she goes. What was she talking about? Maybe a Halloween event or something? Wrong season for that. Maybe she was talking about that one thing. What? Don't make me say it. You know what I mean, don't you? There's no point in paying further attention to her. We should head to... A different spot. The sun is setting. Let's give up on finding a mame for now. 
No, not yet. There's one more place I want to go. I didn't mention it before now because I thought, considering Mame's mental state, it would be a long shot. But maybe... Hey, can you just cut to the chase? Where are you talking about? The maid cafe she works at. She's at the maid cafe, Sunfish Pocket in Akiba. Mame, you were here this whole time? We were looking for you. Sorry to interrupt, but Mame can't talk right now. I don't really know how, but she lost her voice. She must still be struggling with what happened at the studio. But then, why is she here at the cafe? Wait, Leon's here. What is he doing here? I told you, I was going to meet Kizzy today. She wanted to meet here. Where is Kizuna now? She told me a little bit ago that she's running late. She'll be here after she finishes shopping with Iris. Oh, is Iris coming too? Yeah, it was actually Iris who planned the night out. It was her idea to have a video night at the cafe. What does that mean? I don't really know, actually. All I know is, this wasn't a solo date with me and Kizzy. Hey, what happened at the studio? I just want a clue. Anything at all would be helpful. Four days ago, on the 10th of February, you went to Horidori Institute, right? Leon told me. Hey, come on! Why did you go to Horidori Institute? Did you meet Tokiko there? Mame, you ran into terror at the studio, didn't you? Did they say anything to you? Like I said, Mame can't talk right now. I thought I told you. Seeing that you're wearing your outfit, are you working today? Of course, it's Valentine's Day. There's going to be tons of customers here, and they need as many mermaids as they can get. So her manager begged her to work today. Even though she can't talk? She can write, but... I don't understand what Mommy could be thinking. What's going on in her head? Why don't you ask her to write something? Looking at her now, I don't think she'll write anything. Well then... Yeah, we should ask her heart. Using the sink machine. Good thing Boss and Pewter aren't here. I'm sure they'll chew you out later. You know it's a crime to use the machine without permission. You could even get fired for this. It's fine. If I get results, Boss won't care. Hmm, you think so? Tama, can you control the machine? You can do it remotely, right? Are you really going to do this? Mame ran into terror. I'm sure of it. It's highly likely she knows something important. Please, Tama. Please help me. You're my only hope. Ugh, you're so annoying. Fine, I'll do it. I'm going to skip the warning message because I'm sure you already know. Okay, start it. What was that? Could you start, please? That's better. Here I go. Three, two, one.
This is Studio Devita. The Faith to Face set is still up. That means... Uh, I have a bad feeling about this. We have the brand new star of the net world visiting us today. What? Please, show us your dance! You want me to dance? No, no, I'm not Aiba. I can't dance! Come on, let's see it! Ugh, I hate that look he gets in his eyes when he's ignoring me. Fine, I'll do it. Resist, allow your heart to take you. Never let this merciless world erase you. Huh? That didn't really do it for me. Welcome to the quiz show, Faith to Face. I am your host, Andy's Komeiji. It's Komeiji. His facial expression isn't changing at all. It's creepy. This is a competition for the one and only Quiz King's throne. And tonight, as always, we have a head-to-head -head battle between the champion and challenger. And of course, the champion is me, Andy's Komeiji. The challenger is... Me? Can the challenger beat me? I don't know. I'm pretty good at this. What the hell is this? I didn't agree to this. I knew Mommy liked quiz shows, but I didn't expect her to dream about them too. The rules are simple. After five rounds of quizzes, whoever has more correct answers will be the winner. The winner will receive this amazing prize. What? The prize is Amame? Amame, please tell us how you're feeling. Hmm, shy, huh? We'll talk to you throughout the show. The first stage will be right after these commercial messages. Amame is the prize. What kind of show is this? I guess we have no choice but to accept the challenge. If we win, we might learn something about terror, too. Oh well. If this is a competition, I'm gonna do my best, Ryuki. I'll finish the scan before the commercials even end. Somnium scan, activate! Stage one, let's begin. Who will be reading the questions? Very exciting. I guess he's not going to read the questions himself. Makes sense. I wonder who it'll be. Mizuki? Hello, I'm Mizuki Date. I don't really get trivia questions or whatever, but here's the first one. Stage one is the scavenger quiz. We filled the studio with different items. Please choose the item you think is the answer. Quickest to answer wins. I guess it's like a scavenger hunt? Guess so. Here's the first question. What's the correct answer? Your time starts now. Huh, that's the question? Jeez, a tough one right from the start. What should we choose for this question? There is no correlation between them. There doesn't seem to be a correct or incorrect answer. I'm most curious about the labels. I think they're evidence markers, to be exact. There's numbers, letters, tons of different things. I wonder what it means. Another thing is the background music. It's not a very good jingle for thinking about your answer. Folkman, the song Gen gave to Amame. It's inside that cassette tape, but why did you think this was the right answer? The BGM and this label. I just connected the dots. Good enough reason for me. The answer is Volkman. Good job, Challenger. That's correct. Good job, Ryuki. 
It was the ninth, so I chose the label with a nine. You sound like you could do this all day. Huh? Did you say Date? Uh, no. <laughs> what are you, in love with him or something? Mame's always listening to Gen's song with this. Now let's move on to the next question. What's the correct answer? Your time starts now. It's the same question again. The BGM is different. There's a label in front of each of the objects. I'm sure the labels have something to do with the answer. What's our next hint? Maybe it's the BGM again. I can picture this thing being at Brahman. Are you sure about this? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, the answer is this. The Elephant Trinket. All right. Challenger, you are correct. Keep it up. The BGM was Symphony Number no. 5, so the correct answer was the one with 5 on it. Yeah, it's easy if you know the title of the song. When Mame saw this at the store, she bought it right away. She said it made her super lucky. Wonder if it worked. This is the last question of Stage 1. What's the correct answer? Your time starts now. It's the last one. Let's get this. I've heard this song somewhere. It's the robot Shoma made. No doubt about it. The correct answer is... This monowheel robot! The challenger is correct. Thought this would be a bit harder. The BGM is air on G-string. The robot with the G label is the correct answer. That's right. This robot is surprisingly strong and fast. That's the end of the scavenger quiz. Let's look at the results. The challenger is in the lead. Can they take the champion's throne? I guess this shows the standings. We're in blue. I've seen a quiz show like this before. It's Mame. Something is wrong with her. Why? 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 Why are you laughing like that? What did she say? I couldn't make it out. She's not doing too good. Stage 2 is brought to you by me, Aset. You bet. It's Iris this time. Iris with no pep? That's something you don't see every day. I'm sure my fans know this about me, but I'm really into the occult. So my questions are going to be about occult things. The name of this stage is Occult Quiz. I will show you a chart. Please answer with a name or word. Here is the first question. Which of these represents a historical secret society, and can you name it? Hmm. It's either A or B, right? Yeah, but we need to answer with the actual name, not A or B. Okay, so one of these represents a secret society, and we have to name it. Let's think about it. Begin. The answer is B. Freemasons. The challenger is correct. Well done. The Freemasons are said to have existed since the 16th century and have members all over the world. Their purpose and recruitment tactics remain a mystery. Hey, it's okay to talk about them like this, right? We're not... In trouble, are we? It should be fine. It's just Iris's opinion. Well, I guess Mame's opinion. By the way, A was the office I'm from. Lemnisgate. <laughs> Here comes the second question. 
many unidentified mysterious animals, or umas, have been discovered. Which one is smaller? An uma question. I'm not too confident here. Have confidence. Judging from the characteristics of A and B, this could be easy. Begin. How about B, Chupacabra? Correct, Challenger. Good answer. Bigfoot A is up to 10 feet tall. Chupacabra B is no more than 6 feet tall. Damn, that's still bigger than I was thinking. Scary. They could be the same size as you, Ryuki. That is a scary thought. This is the last question of the occult quiz. Which of these two things affect the human psyche and behavior, A or B? Effect is sort of vague. There could be a lot of answers. I guess we're supposed to choose the best representative answer. Begin. The answer is B, subliminal. Correct. Marvelous. Imagine watching a video and a juice container appears. Even if it's only for a split second, faster than the brain can even consciously register it, the viewer is struck by the desire to buy juice. That is the subliminal effect. Maybe all of us are subconsciously affected by someone or something. Now that you mention it, I do kind of want some juice. You're just thirsty. That is all for the occult quiz. I wonder what the panel looks like now. Well, 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 the challenger is keeping up. That's it for stage two. Three stages left. Let's keep it up. Oh, Amame showed up again. Why did this 